Good morning, Raider fans. I'm Brett Marison. I'm Kadar Carrington. And Sam Mullen. And we are here to bring you the latest on our local professional sports and our high school sports here at Scott Plains Family High School. Let's start off with professional sports. Uh, let's start off with the NFL. Um, sadly, our local teams aren't doing as good as we hoped. Um, the Giants are now 3-6, and six, coming off of a bad 38-17 loss to the Seahawks. Um, Although there was one highlight of the game where Odell Beckham Jr. absolutely burned Richard Sherman. Yeah, he looks great. He looks great so far. Yeah, he's yeah. an absolute beast. But uh, when when your defense gives up over 350 yards on the ground, you, you, that's not how you win ball games. Yeah, that's I mean, not. Marshawn, <laughs> Marshawn Lynch hashtag beast mode. He just completely torched uh, the entire Giants defense. Um, I mean, there's Skittles, baby. He he's a phenomenal athlete. Uh, great downhill runner. Uh, the Giants just don't have the kind of brute strength on that defensive line um, to keep a guy like that contained. Yeah, and it was just, I really didn't know what was going on. I was watching this game, and now the Giants, due to that loss, are almost a long shot to even make the NFC wild card because yeah. you need all those other teams to lose their next few games. Plus, you have to have the Giants win almost every single one of their games that yeah, I mean, coming off on schedule, starting with your favorite team, San Fran. That's right. Uh, it's going to be a big game this week. Uh, both teams kind of in a must, must-win must situation. They're both in pretty tough divisions. Uh, Giants are probably actually in a tougher division, even though the NFC West has been more dominant of late. Uh, they got the Cowboys and Eagles to take care of two of the best teams in the NFL. Uh, Niners got the one lost Cardinals coming off a Carson Palmer ACL injury, and also the Seahawks, obviously huge division foes. Um, so that that game should be very interesting. Uh, it, it'll be interesting to see uh, how the Giants receivers will match up against that tough Niners secondary, and especially with Patrick Willis that Patrick unfortunately Willis. <laughs> uh, made the Pro Bowls every year that he's been in the NFL, but he will not be playing another game this year due to his season ending toe injury. So it'll be see it'll be interesting to see how the return of Rashad Jennings for the Giants, uh, how they're able to capitalize on the injuries. And Kadar, what do you think about this? Uh yeah, I definitely I mean the 49ers are probably gonna pull out the win. They've been really um they haven't been too consistent this year, but yeah. I think they've shown in the past that they're a really good football team and unfortunately it's just not the Giants season this year. Um I don't see them making the playoffs at all. So. Yeah. I mean if they do make the playoffs they might not even get past the first round. That's even if they do. Yeah. But right now, they said the whole problem for the Giants right now is not just how they're playing, but people are blaming the coaching staff. Yeah. Coughlin's been with the Giants for years now. He's got two rings. Yeah. Perry Fuel, the defensive coordinator, has a ring. But if you really watch the way his defense plays, he doesn't really like to blitz, which I find kind of strange. Yeah. Which is it's really weird to me. And when he does blitz, he sends three guys. He's mm-hmm. not sending like the whole entire yeah. line, like yeah. like a team like the Seahawks would. Mm-hmm. So it's really weird to me why he wouldn't blitz when, especially when you're playing a team like Seattle yeah. or a team you like gotta, Indianapolis. You put pressure on Will. If you give Wilson all day in the pocket, he's gonna make you pay. Yeah. So I mean, you gotta put pressure on the guy to make him uncomfortable in the pocket to because he doesn't have a lot of weapons out there. So if you put pressure on him, make him throw some passes that he wouldn't normally throw, give your secondary a chance to make a few interceptions, make a few plays, that's your best shot to win. Yeah, and if you look at the coaching staff now, I mean, especially offensive coordinator Ben McAdoo, who has never been an offensive coordinator in his entire NFL coaching staff career. He's been a tight ends coach for the Packers, and I think he was a line coach at one time. Yeah, he was. But, I mean, his offense really – he says that he's a West Coast offense guy, but his offense really – has not really shown much. Yeah, I mean... It's just, I don't know what's going on yeah, with him. They've been uh, pretty up and down most of the year. They've they've had some flashes. Obviously, the injuries that they've had with their skill position players, Victor Cruz after the year, Rashad Jennings missing a big chunk of time. That, that doesn't help. Um, so I think it'll be good for the Giants to have Jennings back, very skilled running back. Um, and Odell Beckham Jr. has just been phenomenal since uh, starting his NFL career. Um, obviously, having a good game against one of the best "quote unquote" cornerbacks, uh, Richard Sherman. <laughs> "Quote unquote," uh, yeah. I wouldn't say he's the best, but he uh, people would beg to differ. Um, so I think him going into Seattle and having a good game against him uh, that shows that he's a vital part of this offense, and I think the Giants really got a good pick for the future in him. Yeah, Kadar, what do you think? I thought- I agree. Yeah, he's <laughs> I agree. Good. He's yeah. good. And the last thing that we got to touch up on here about the Giants is that, first of all, you're Tom Coughlin right now. You've been coaching the Giants forever, and you have two Super Bowl rings. After the season, do you try to stay another year 
and see if they get rid of Perry Fuel, which is supposedly most likely going to happen? Yeah. And, or do you just leave and just let the entire coaching staff get fired besides yourself so you go out on a good note? Because if you get fired, it doesn't really look good. Yeah, I think the Giants are best off keeping Coughlin. I think he's done a phenomenal job uh, over his tenure. I think you got to get rid of the defensive coordinator. I think that's where most of the issues lie. And I think it's unfortunate for Coughlin to get blamed as the head coach. Uh, he's done nothing but bring two, two rings to this city. Uh, and it's terrible to see fans jump all over him after you know a couple bad seasons in a row. I think you get rid of the defensive coordinator, uh, bring it, revamp that. You know, they, uh, they were best when they had a good defensive line. Uh, that hasn't been the case the past couple of years. So I think if they get that back in order, uh, they'll be back on the right track. Good. what do you think about this whole situation? Um, you should definitely keep Coughlin and uh, fire the defensive coordinator. Hopefully next year the defense will be revamped. They'll be able to you know, make some plays in the future. Hopefully the offense gets clicking. They don't have so many injuries. And I think probably next year, if they're able to get all of that together, then they can, because as you can see, they're always Super Bowl-bound teams. I mean, they, they really proved they'll be the wild card, or they might not perhaps have the best team. Like, I remember yeah. when they played the They always the find a way to win. Yeah, they always yeah. find a way to win. So, I mean, it's the Giants, the little Giants. I mean, yeah, the Giants. little Giants. That's how they are, so. Yeah, but if you look at the offense now, too, besides the defense, I mean, McAdoo, I think he kind of has to go because it's like his offense, yes, he's had some very good plays, but when those plays work, he doesn't use them again. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. I just think that maybe they need another offensive coordinator because, like, I mean, Kevin Gilbride retired because he knew it was his time to go. Yeah. And I think that they need someone who has more experience than McAdoo because McAdoo has worked with one of the best offenses in the NFL in Green Bay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And But the fact is, and people have been saying this, that that offense is built for a quarterback who has mobility like Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. And you look at Eli Manning, yes. he's got some mobility, but he's not that fast of a yeah. runner. He's, so that's not a, built for he's him. He's a pocket passer. Um, I, I think if they get someone more... F I think they keep Eli, and I think they get someone, an offensive coordinator, who can work around Eli's skill set. I don't think you try and make him do things that he's not used to doing. I don't think you try and make him do things that he's not good at. Because um, he is that franchise. Um, I mean... He's got two rings. Exactly. He's yeah. You look at the past couple of years, not that great. But, I mean, he's got more rings than his brother. So, <laughs> that's very true. I think you build, you get someone who can bring the best out in Eli and you surround him with weapons that makes him a, a pretty good quarterback. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's move on to the Jets now. The Jets shocking the NFL world this past yeah, week, wow. defeating the Pittsburgh Steelers. No one saw they that now, Yeah, no one saw that coming at all. They now move to 2-7. and seven. However, they are way out of it. Um... And let's get some analysis on this game because they the Jets did look pretty solid. I mean, defeating one of the hottest teams in the NFL. Yeah, I think that's just one of those cases where you just throw your hands up in the air and you just say, "What? Like, I don't understand how this thing happens." You got <laughs> Big Ben throws six TDs, two games straight, heading into New York. New York has, if not the one of the worst secondaries in the NFL. You put those two things together, you just think, "Oh, Pittsburgh's going to torch them. It's not even going to be close." Um, but then, look what happens. New York somehow pulls off the victory. It's pretty inexplicable, really. Uh, there's not a, not a whole lot of stats to back up why this happened, but the fact is that it did. And um, I think this will be good momentum uh, for the Jets. Obviously, their season is uh, pretty helpless, but uh, I think if they can string a few wins together in these next couple weeks, um, I think it'll be a positive note ending the season. They've had an extremely tough schedule. So you look at their record and you just think, oh, they're a terrible team. Uh, but they've gone up against the AFC West, which is one of the best divisions. Very they their own division, which is playing at an extremely high level. Yeah. So uh, I think that their record doesn't really show what they've done this year. Uh, their defense is one of the best in the league. So I, I don't think it's fair to... Just, that just, so yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Kadar, what do you think about well, this one? Uh, being a Pittsburgh fan myself, I was uh, very ashamed <laughs> at what happened. Um, I was fortunate enough not to have work that, and um, I really wish I, I really wish I did have work, so I didn't have to watch that yeah. uh, slaughter because yeah. it was embarrassing. But you know, they're the local team. I got to support them no matter what, so I'm proud that you know they were able to pull off the win, yeah. even though they beat my favorite team. But <laughs> it's okay. I mean. Yeah, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's still looking pretty yeah, good, so good. You're, you're in good shape. Yeah. 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 I can't stand either team, so I really didn't care who won that game. But um, if you look at the Steelers, 
Big Ben the past few weeks has thrown more than one touchdown and over 200 yards. Last week he had over 300 yards and six touchdowns. And that's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, just and this week, he maybe had a little over 100 yards and one touchdown. I yeah. mean, and Mike Vick for the Jets threw a touchdown pass. Yeah, and he of had course, that he bombed to TJ Graham. Yeah, the that big one, bomb that to TJ Graham. Plays of the week. That was. Yeah, but like, I mean, Mike Vick did better than the red hot Big Ben. Yeah, I mean. Like, what's up with that? Neither, neither team has a particularly strong secondary, so I think. Uh, it could have gone either way for the quarterback. Um, but I think turnovers really cost the Steelers momentum in the game. Uh, Antonio Brown made a couple costly errors, one on a punt return and one where he just simply dropped the ball. Um, I think you just fix that up. Uh, you have a much better shot to win. And, again, the Jets really never ran away with it. Uh, after the Steelers scored a touchdown, that long touchdown to Martavis Bryan with under two minutes. Uh, if Pittsburgh had recovered that onside kick, they would have been down seven in a two-minute drill situation. So the Jets had a lot of chances to put that game away. And they didn't. But they failed to do so. So the yeah. Jets were actually pretty lo- – even though they it looked like they dominated the game because they were up by like 20 or so points for most of the game, uh, they really – Needed to, they need to learn to like step on the throats of their opponents if they want to keep winning ball games. Yeah, what do you think of this? Oh, yeah, I, um, I don't think. I mean, the Steelers had a lot of costly turnovers, as you already said, and I think maybe the Jets they were just able to capitalize. I don't think they really showed like a absolute dominance over the Steelers. Like, oh, you know, we pounded you guys into the ground and we won the game outright. But I mean, the Jets were able to do that. I can't complain. I don't really see it as a problem as a Pittsburgh fan myself because I feel like we're still, I mean, we're still in it. So the Jets are our side. Yeah, Pittsburgh, uh, the AFC North is one of the best divisions, so it'll be interesting to see how that playoff scenario works with the Browns, Ravens, Mm -hmm. Bengals, and Steelers all playing at a pretty good level right now. Yeah, all right, now let's move out of football. We will go to basketball now. And our local teams, one of them is doing very well, the other one not so well. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets are 4-2 and two and will play tonight in Phoenix against the Suns. Darren Williams coming off of two spectacular games, and yeah. there's a lot of question whether he was really the point guard that everyone said he was going to be because exactly. of all the ankle surgeries. Mm-hmm. He's, so, he's finally playing uh, like the Darren that they bought from the Jazz a few years ago, the one they wanted. Um, I think between him and a healthy Brooke Lopez, which is seldom seen, uh, they're a very good ball team. Uh, Brooke Lopez is probably one of the best big men in the entire game. Um, so if he stays healthy for the year, you got to like the chances of the Nets returning to the playoffs. And with a mediocre uh, a Eastern Conference, um, there's a pretty good chance that they get to the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, but obviously, you need Darren Williams to keep playing at that level, which a lot of people are unsure if he'll be able to do. And you got to keep Brooke Lopez healthy because uh, if he goes back out with the multiple injuries that he's had over the course of his career, uh, the Jets, the Nets really don't have that good of a secondary big man to fill in for him. Yeah, what do you think, Adar? Yeah, um, you know, Darren Williams, he's really shown that he's going to be a good point guard, hopefully, hopefully, this year. Because Darren Williams, he's been very inconsistent. And yeah. it's kind of a shame because I'm also, like, I like the Brooklyn Nets a lot. And I feel like he hasn't really performed to – you know, what they're paying him. And mm-hmm. I feel like hopefully this year he'll have his breakout year. Finally, you know, there's no excuses. Just go out and play good basketball. Yeah, so. people have been waiting a long time to see the Darren Williams that they bought. They have. Yeah, because they when he first came to the Nets, when it was one of their last two years in New Jersey, when he first came over in that trade, he was a stud. Yeah. I he, mean, he, the guy was he, literally unstoppable. Yeah, he was all-star caliber player. Yeah, he had a game where he had 57 points against the Bobcats, who are now the Charlotte Hornets. And he made Team USA in the Olympics that year. Yeah. He, and he just hasn't been the same since uh, they first got him. And obviously, he's aged a lot since they got him. But if he can play at a, a, a pretty high level, they're not expecting all-star caliber numbers out of him anymore. But if he can be the facilitator that they want him to be um, and just keep feeding the ball to the likes of Brooke Lopez mm-hmm. and the various other players, uh, the, the Nets will be a very, very solid team and playoff contender. Yeah, and you look at the Nets now, especially Garnett taking the challenge of saying that the Nets are not going to win the Atlantic Division, which right now it looks like they have a pretty good shot at it mm-hmm. with the Knicks being down and everything. Yeah, the Knicks are yeah. just... We'll get to that in a second. Garbage. But um, the Kevin Garnett's also been having a pretty bounce-back year 
the past six games. I mean, he's really been playing well. He hasn't been scoring that much, but he's gotten a lot of rebounds. Yeah, he's really I mean, making things happen on the floor. Yeah. yeah. The, Garnett doesn't play that many minutes anymore because he's a very old man. But <laughs> when, <laughs> when he's in, uh, I mean, he, he still plays very similar to how he has played in the past. Um, he doesn't try and do too much because he knows that physically he's not the same specimen that he's been uh, at the prime of his career. Um, but he comes off the bench. Uh, he he gets a handful of rebounds, uh, and that's what they want. They want to uh, make sure that he's getting the ball given to the other players that can score. Um, and as long as he keeps doing that uh, and and stays healthy, I don't I don't think the Nets want to push him to do too much. But if he just does uh, a little bit here and there, uh, that's the best thing for the Nets. You know what do you think about this one, Kadar? Um, I hope. <laughs> I mean, they really had a good team, and I feel like with Kevin Garnett, he's done a lot over his long, long career. And, I mean, he knows his place, he knows his role, and as long as he just keeps and, you know, sticks to that, he doesn't get injured, then I think he'll have a good season as well. Yeah. He'll be able to contribute. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. I mean, Garnett's been playing pretty well. you got to just make sure everyone keeps playing. I mean, Joe Johnson's also been playing very good. Yeah, had 34 points the other night. Yep, very he's, good. Yeah, he's playing unbelievable. But now let's get to the Knicks. The Knicks are, as usual, going downhill. They are 2-6, yeah. and six, but however, the point guard that they got in the offseason, Jose Calderon, has not returned yet from injury, so we have yet to see how they're going to play with Calderon in the lineup. Mm-hmm. So what do we think about this? Yeah, I think outside of Melo, I mean, Calderon's solid, but I think outside of Carmelo Anthony, they just don't have uh, the kind of playmakers that you need to be a successful team. He, Carmelo can't do it all on his own, even though he might think he can. He thinks he can... Uh, put the team on his back and bring a championship to this city. Uh, I think he made. I personally think he made the wrong decision uh, returning to New York. Um, I think he would have been better suited going to a place like Chicago, where they actually have legitimate championship aspirations. Yeah, and they lost Boozer, so if he went there, yeah, exactly. Chicago would have been a great, great team. They still are, um, but I think he thought that uh, you know Phil Jackson leading that team he's like oh like Phil he's been there he knows what's good for this city he knows what's good for this team but I think the way they're playing right now uh, he's got to be regretting that he came back to New York yeah, yeah. what do you think, I think about it just, Anthony? it just comes down to the Knicks being a one dimensional team they give the ball to Anthony and then they just let him operate and you know you can't win games like that. You can't. Yeah, you can't. It's not, exactly. not yeah, going to work out. It's not, I mean, not a good recipe for success. And they live and die by the three, which is, I mean, it's fun to watch, especially when they're hot. Like, you ever seen Carmelo Anthony, J.R. Smith all hot from three? Like, it's really fun to watch. Yeah. But when, when they're not, it's yeah, just like, cold, you know, it's just what are you city. doing? Yeah, yeah exactly. it's city. <laughs> so. I mean, it's like, the thing with the Knicks, I think the organization believes that as long as you got Anthony and J.R. Smith, that you're fine. And J.R. Smith, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, too. But ever since he had that one really big breakout year with the Knicks mm-hmm. and then got his big contract extension, he got the big bucks with that contract, yeah. he really has not played well. And you really got to be thinking he could be saying, hey, I got my money. I really don't have to do yeah. what I used to. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem. The guy has a big year and the organization thinks, oh, like he's, he's going to keep he's, performing. He's going to keep <laughs> yeah. this up. But a lot of the times you see with so many players again and again that they have this great year, they get the money. And then they just fall right off back before they were, before that breakout year. Yeah. And I think if the Knicks want to be successful, uh, they got to get a big three. You've seen it. All the successful teams over the past five, six, seven years have had that big three. You got the Nets with Pierce, I mean, uh, the Celtics with Pierce, Allen, and Garnett, yeah. the Heat with James Bosch and Wade, uh, now the Cavaliers with Love, uh, Kyrie, and James. Um, so I think if the Knicks want to be a championship contender, they're going to need not just Melo, but two other big weapons that uh, can really dominate the floor. Yeah, and you looked at them when they had the two big weapons. They had Their big three was Melo, Tyson Chandler, and Amari Stoudemire. And they were... And, they, they were yeah, they and they were, were pretty good. One of the best teams in the Eastern Conference in the league. And they but. could make, they would always make the playoffs, but mm-hmm. they would never get past the first round. But they would always compete. Yeah, in the first round. And I think that was the they were going in the right direction with those three. They mm-hmm. were consistently making the playoffs, and I, th- and I thought that it was only a matter of time before they got over that hump. But then 
they just seem to abandon the big three idea and look what's happened. They've gone completely downhill. I'm confused yeah. why they would do that. I mean, you go with somebody like J.R. Smith. To, to me, I mean, I love J.R. Smith. I think he's a great player, but he's not – he doesn't have a diverse game. I mean, he yeah. dunks and he takes threes. And he's and clutch, if he's yeah. not, Yeah, if he's not hot or he's not clutch, then he's not really contributing, which mm-hmm. is, I'd say, most of the time. Yeah. And I thought they had a really good team. So I, I don't know what's going on with the yeah. Knicks. Yeah, Bad decision-making by the team. Yeah, I don't think anything, anyone knows what's going on. And we will get into another pro sport now with hockey. And let me just get the stats up here. Um, the Devils and the Rangers are doing decent, and the Islanders are looking really good right now. The Devils are 7-7-2 after being the Wild last night, 3-1. to And Corey Schneider finally got a win between the pipes as he has been just mediocre so far. So what do we think about the Devils right now? Jersey's team. Uh, you know... Devils, they started a lot hotter than uh, their record shows, um, and I think what it comes down to is Corey Schneider's play. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he's mediocre as he's been, uh, that's how the team plays. I, the team kind of fuels off their goalie. So when he's not hot, team's not hot. When he's cold, team's cold. So I think he's really got to pick his game up if the Devils uh, want to be a successful team and return to the playoffs. Yeah, what do you think about this? Uh, I know you're not a huge hockey fan, but yeah, um, goalie makes plays. Then I guess it saves the season and makes them, you know, makes the Devils play better. Because yeah. honestly, like it comes down, he's the last, you know, stop. I mean, yeah. once it goes past them, then obviously the other team scores points. So yeah, if you I give mean, and if you're giving up a lot of goals, it puts a lot of pressure on the offense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think he's got to he's got to really play solid to let the team. Uh, you know, feel more comfortable on the ice because they're always playing catch up. Yeah. It's going to be really hard to win consistent games. Yeah, and you look at the Devils right now. I mean, there were a lot of questions around the fan base whether they should have kept Peter DeBoer or not, and they did. But now they have the, a talented roster. And a few years ago, when they made that big run to the Stanley Cup, mm-hmm. where they lost to the Kings in five games, yeah. no, six games, excuse me, where uh, for Adore, that was his last year of mm-hmm. being absolutely unbelievable and the yeah. Devils totally fueled off of that Brodeur in the playoffs was mm. red hot looked like the elite goalie that he was when he was younger and then the next year when they keep him as a starter he's mediocre Yeah. and the Devils are not good they have Schneider as a backup still because they still want to develop him mm. now Schneider's the full time starter and I just don't know if the defense on the Devils is really up to par with what they really need yeah uh, Brodeur had been the face of that franchise for many years and I think uh, his departure from that team uh, that kind of started the downhill trend for them. Um, he was he had always been a wall in between the pipes. Um, and I think when he started reaching the end of his uh, you know great play mm-hmm. and the defense has fallen apart, uh, you question whether the devils are going to be a dominant team. Their offense is, not phenomenal, mm-hmm. um, so I think between the not so great defense and the mediocre play from Corey Schneider, uh, I think it'll be hard to say that the Devils will get back to the playoffs. And if they do, I don't think they're going to be uh, that intimidating for other teams. Yeah, and uh, we'll move on from the Devils now. We'll go to the Rangers. The Rangers are seven and seven, six and two after defeating the Penguins five nothing last night. Boy, was that a nice win. Yeah. Um, Rick Nash, who had a goal and two assists, has been playing absolutely out of his mind. He looks like the Rick Nash they traded for and paid all the big bucks for. And I know you're a huge Ranger fan, so what do you think about this one? Yeah, uh, it's it's great to see Nash playing great. Um, it's also great to see Lundqvist. He's been playing a lot better than he had started the season. Coming out of the slump. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he's one of the best goalies in the league, in the world. I didn't think his slump would last that long. So I think uh, now that he's playing good, Nash is sparking that offense. Uh, I think the Rangers are really going to be quite competitive uh, throughout the rest of the year as long as those two big components uh, stay dominant as they've been the last couple games. Yeah. What do you think about this? Yeah, hopefully the Rangers stay hot throughout the season. They're, the move. They're able to make the playoffs and hopefully win. So. Yeah, and the Rangers, in my opinion, if you look at their roster, on paper they have one of the best teams. Yeah. I mean, you got Nash, you got Zuccarello, and goal you got Lundqvist. Mm-hmm. You got some really good rookies who they drafted. They drafted yeah, they Kevin got... Hayes from Boston College, mm-hmm. whose brother is on the Florida Panthers, my favorite team. Yeah. <laughs> and Kevin Hayes had an assist last night, 
and these guys have potential to become really good players. Yeah, the Rangers have a lot of good young talent. Um, you've seen it. And good veterans. Exactly. Yeah, they got a lot of great leadership, which is helping those young guys uh, form into great players. Um, and I think you need you need that balance to be a successful team. You need to have good veterans uh, to lead, but then you also want to have good young guys uh, so that your future isn't just completely disastrous once those veterans. Uh, Retire. Yeah, I think we can all agree that that's in every sport. I mean, yeah, you look yeah. at you you look at baseball. You look at Billy Bean's first good Oakland A's team. If you've ever seen the movie Moneyball, mm. the veteran that he needed was David Justice. Yeah, David Justice leads that team as a veteran. That team goes on to win a bunch of games. Yeah, you have in hockey, especially because there's still some talented veterans in hockey. Devils got Yaramir Yager. He's mm. one of the leading point scorers in the history of the NHL, yeah. and he's and he's 42 years old. So, yeah. and the Rangers got Marty St. Louis, who's playing really well. So I think as long as they have this good veteran leadership and good young talent, they're going to have a really good season. Yeah. And now the Islanders will do that quickly because we got to move quickly yeah. here. The Islanders are 10-5 and five after being the Avalanche 6 nothing last night. And the Avalanche having one of the best goaltenders in the league, Semyon Varlamov, who lets in six goals against the Islanders. And the Islanders yeah. are still playing really well, though. Yeah, rough play uh, from Varlamov, but... Uh, I, I've said it again and again. John Tavares is one of the best players in the NHL. Uh, him leading that offense. Uh, they're, they're a really good team. Um, I think he's helping those other guys that they acquired in the offseason uh, get used to the Islanders' culture. And I think uh, if they keep playing the way that they have been, um, they could make it to the playoffs for the first time in quite a while. Yeah. And hopefully exactly. they will. I hope they do make the playoffs. The yeah. team. I'm loving watching the Islanders, even though I'm not an Islanders fan. I always want them to do well. Yeah. So now let's move on to high school sports. Finally, we have our boys soccer team for the first time since 2011 is competing for the sectional championship yeah. this, thir- this Thursday here at the high school. I will have the privilege to be commentating on that game. Yeah. So what is our analysis on the boys soccer season? They had a great season. They are 20 and 3. Yeah, the boys have just been dominant uh, the whole year. Their three losses, I wouldn't read too much into it. They've just been dominant ever since uh, that last loss against Plainfield. They breezed through the county tournament. They've just annihilated their opponents that they face in the sectional tournament. Um, Called a break, you could say, uh, as the three seed, one seed Milburn and two seed Westfield both lost uh, before we had the chance to play them. Uh, So we did face... Uh, higher seeds than we would have thought we would play, but I think going into this game against Elizabeth in the sectional final, you gotta like our chances. We've beaten them three nothing already this season, and we're probably playing at the highest level that we've played all season. So I think we're gonna win this game and keep going to the state finals. And Kadar, what do you think about this one? Um, I just want to make the prediction now. We're definitely winning the state finals. Okay. No, no doubt. Okay. Honestly, no we're Andrew Butts. Yeah, we're yeah. we're taking this game. I think this game is gonna be. Honestly, I think it'll be practice because, like you said, we've beaten them already, so I don't see why we don't beat them again. Yeah. And, I mean, it's a sectional championship. You know, the team, I know they're pumped up to win this. So. Yeah, they really want this. Yeah. Yeah. Especially I'll if see. they're not making it the last couple of years. Exactly. They're, yeah. they're very, very hungry for this. I don't see any doubt that they're going to win sectionals, and after that will come state group championships, which is for the state championship yeah. ring. Yeah. And I see them getting very far in that tournament, if not winning that, yeah, as we've the, seen the domination all season, mm-hmm. especially against the, Phillipsburg. Yeah, a bunch of the one seeds in the other groups have uh, lost. So that would make their road to the championship a lot easier also, even though I think they could beat any team in the state regardless of who it is. Yeah, and it really, they really look like they've been proving that. So we'll move on to the girls now. Again, the boys' game is Thursday, 2 p.m. It's Yes, it is during school, but right after the yeah, bell rings maybe. for the end of the day at 224, please come outside to Wexler Field. You will enjoy that matchup a lot. A lot yeah, of people there. A lot, Sam, a lot of smack talk going nation. on on social media, so uh, make sure you show your support. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the girls, let's talk about the girls now. They are going to be in their sectional final on Friday at 2 p.m. as well. They are 20-0-2. Have not lost the game. They beat Westfield in overtime yesterday on a very nice goal by Tori Baliatico. Yeah, she, uh, first minute of overtime, she gets the ball, shreds the defense, pockets it, game over, girls advance. Um, girls are just been phenomenal all year you wouldn't expect anything less it was great uh for the girls to knock out westfield their season's done um the girls were very happy about doing that uh you gotta like their chances to go all the way getting that ring only giving up a handful of goals all season not losing a single game a couple times in there uh but the momentum that they have after this huge win over 
uh, rival Westfield, uh, that should propel them all the way through the state tournament. Yeah, what do you think of that? Yeah, these Raiders really play like a team, and also I've never seen this dominance at any high school team like throughout my high school career. So yeah, it's like it's amazing to see them. Yeah, they're just undefeated. I mean, they tie two games, but. Other than that, I mean, they're playing phenomenal. I've never seen this before. So yeah, I don't think I ever have either. They're looking fantastic. And now we'll go to football. Playoff game, Friday night lights at Colonia High School. Very nice blue turf field, Smurf turf, just like Boise State. <laughs> yeah. um, and Colonia is 9-0. However, they haven't played that many strong opponents. And our boys are 3-6, and six, but we've had a very, very tough schedule moving into this new conference. Yeah. So let's get some analysis on this. Uh, I think that it'll be a very competitive game. Um, even though they are the one seed, we're the eight seed, I really would like to see us pull off the upset. I think we have a decent shot. Um, I work in Colonia, so it would be nothing nothing like being uh, the... I, I know a lot of people that go there, so it would be really sweet to go into work and be like, hey, we just beat you. Uh, take that. And I think, <laughs> take I that. think uh, not just that I'm hoping, I think we actually have a legitimate chance. Um, Kobe, Amendo, and Markel... Uh, they've been playing great the entire year. Yeah. I, I've said it time and time again. Run the ball, dominate. Stick to what you're um, good at. And I think Colonia's quarterback uh, is phenomenal. So I think if we can keep him somewhat in check, I, I don't think we'll be able to shut him down entirely. But if we can slow him down a little bit here and there uh, and then capitalize on opportunities that we're given throughout the game, I think that'll give us the best shot of winning and moving on in the uh, in the playoff. And yeah, what do you think about this one, Bidar? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a close game, no doubt. Um, I know for a fact that we do struggle with teams with really good quarterbacks. However, hopefully maybe the qu- quarterback has a bad game and yeah. our defense is really, you know, they're on point and they really know what they're doing and maybe they'll come up with a few interceptions and turnovers. Mm-hmm. And I think that'll be the deciding factor in the game. So the defense definitely needs to step up. And yeah. if they step up, then hopefully we'll get the win. Yeah, and I think that we'll, we could possibly get this win as well. However, no Kobe White this weekend. At, he is out with a concussion. Yeah. Amendo Thomas returns tough. to the lineup, which is always yeah. good to have Amendo back in the lineup mm-hmm. after he had those ankle injuries. Yeah. And he's, of course, a very reliable backup, as you saw when Kobe went down in the game against Linden. Amendo comes in and rushes for over 100 yards and two scores. Yeah. So I think that... I, I think with um, Amendo the in the team's lineup, in good hands. Yeah, uh, even though so. Kobe's not going to be out on the field, uh, I think Kobe and Markel, two great rushers of the ball. Um, I think that with them uh, playing pretty good, uh, I think the team will be in decent shape even though they won't have Kobe out there. Yeah, and of course predictions, you're probably going to say Raiders. You're probably going to say Raiders as well, and I'm going to say Raiders. Let's go Raiders. Please go to that game, by the way, Friday, 7 p.m. at Colonia High School. Very nice stadium. You're going to love going there, Friday Night Lights. And uh, just a couple more quick sports. We have girls volleyball finished 5-13. and I think that we all got to applaud them for their effort. Nice season by the girls. Five wins. I mean, that's not great, but still great effort by the seniors. Yeah, it was a... a Solid season all around. Uh, I think that they have a pretty bright future going forward. Yeah, they do. And that, now we'll get to the, the story of the year. Girls tennis, their best record in years, 14-7. and seven. Hey, Definitely got to clap for them. Didn't make it that far in the state tournament, but hey, they finished 14-7. They got a lot to smile about. Yeah, uh, one of the best, uh, the best year that the girls tennis team has ever had. Uh, beating Westfield uh, multiple times, having previously never beaten them. That's something to pat, pat them. Uh, they can pat themselves on the back for doing that. Uh, and I think after this year, uh, it shows that the future of our girls' tennis team is very bright. I think if uh, the coach continues to keep these girls uh, improving, that the girls' tennis team is going to be very successful in the, in the next few years. Yeah, and our last sport, Kadar, you're on the cross-country team. What do you got for us about cross-country? Well, the cross-country runners, they did have a phenomenal season. Unfortunately, no one was able to place at the group championships or to meet the champions, but, um, you know, they had a solid season. You know, we lost some runners, but winter track is coming up, guys, and this, this is our time to take the state championship. So, you know, all those cross-country runners are also going to be running long distance for winter track, so... I mean, you should look out for us for this upcoming season. Oh, yeah. yeah, go Raiders. And uh, we got our last thing before we head to an interview with Jack DeFau, uh, our Raider Nation update with Sam Mahler over here. Sam, what do you got for us today? Uh, yeah, Raider Nation has been uh, a force to be reckoned with. Uh, the pep band has been present. Uh, we've got a couple, we got a handful of people from the marching band uh, making a lot of noise at the soccer games. So that's great to see. Hopefully they continue their presence. Uh, as we need them to in the in the next few uh, sectional final and state games, um, and I think that 
uh, their presence and enthusiasm for the game uh, will will help propel our team to get in that state right. Yeah, I think so too. It's going to be a really, really great rest of the fall season. Oh yeah. And we will be right back with an interview with varsity football player Jack DeFell. All right, welcome back to Raiders Sports Radio. We are here with a member of our varsity football squad, Jack DeFell. How are you doing today, Jack? Good, how are you? Good. Um, so we have a few questions for you. And then we'll get into some football discussion here. Uh, how have you guys prepared for your playoff game against Colonia this Friday night? Uh, we've been watching a lot of film, and uh, we've just been really preparing, trying to get our offense set for the game. All right. Sounds good. So um, what makes the Raiders such a dan- dangerous opponent for Colonia? Definitely our speed. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of speed, a quarterback, running back, especially a receiver. We can do jets around the outside, too. <laughs> it works good. a lot. <laughs> We saw that in the game against Warren Hills. That was great, actually. Um, and how is the team spirit right now? Uh, even though we came off a tough loss from Peeberg, uh, we still come out. We won a good game against Warren Hills, which we needed to win to propel us into the playoffs. And now we got Colonia. We're ready to take them on. Yeah, and we know Colonia is undefeated. They are, of course. I've been reading that they're not in that strong of a conference, though. So yeah. Are you guys going to take advantage of that, or yeah. like? Like, what's the competition between you two? Yeah, we did play them in the preseason. They, they definitely were a worthy opponent, but I think we definitely have a good chance against them. All right. Awesome. And uh, just overall, how do you think the season's gone for you guys so far? I know you guys are 3-6. I think and we've six. had a lot of tough breaks this year. We've had a really tough schedule with top three top 20 teams, Montgomery, Peaberg, and uh, North Hunterdon. It's very good teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, of course, what's your prediction for this playoff game this week? I think we pull out the win. Yeah, definitely of course he thinks that, right? He's a Raider. Yeah, he's a Raider. All right, and uh, last question: Can you please sign the wall up here? Yes, I can. Sign the wall. All right, that wraps up, that wraps up our interview session of Rare Sports Radio. I'm Brett Mayerson. I'm Kadar Carrington, and we'll see you next week.